The Mere in Antwerp. It is the most famous street in the city, and it is one of the busiest shopping streets in the country. Let's have a look at the history of this place. Around the year 1000, the core of Antwerp residents and trading activities has become so solid that it is demarcated with the first earthen walls. Until about 1180, a ring of canals protects the city. The first city centre is still very small, so the Church of Our Lady is still outside the actual city area. Around 1200, major fortification works are carried out and the surface of the city doubles. Hout Mir, the oldest mention of the Mir, dates from 1257. The name refers to moist, low-lying land or a lake just outside the city. This lake is probably also used to store wood. The gate in the ramparts of the city in this area is named Mayer Port. Between 1295 and 1314, the ramparts of the city are expanded again. Part of the mayor now lies within the city borders. Around 1400, the entire mayor lies within the city walls. In this drawing from the early 16th century, we see that the mayor port is now within the city walls. The rural character of the area has disappeared. We also see the canal that was built in the 15th century. It drains all the water present in the area and supplies fresh water. This water comes from a river outside the city and is led through the canals into the centre. In 1527, a monumental crucifix is erected on the mayor. With a small interruption, this crucifix will determine the view of the mayor until 1797. Around 1500, Antwerp grows into one of the largest cities north of the Alps, surpassed only by Paris. The city's appeal is growing, and the area around the mayor becomes the place where numerous wealthy merchants and financiers, especially Italians and Portuguese, settle. When the stock exchange building in the old centre of the city becomes too small for the important trade centre that Antwerp is becoming, a new, larger stock exchange building is built in 1531 in a side street. The mayor takes on a bourgeois appearance. It is the place where the wealthy citizens are at home. At the end of the 16th century, Maria Pipelinks lives at number 54. Maria is the mother of Peter Paul Rubens, who spends his childhood years in this place. Rubens became one of the most important painters of that period and spent several years in Italy to study the treasures of antiquity and contemporary Italian art. In 1608, he returns to Antwerp and buys a property in a side street of the Mayer, where he establishes his residence and a painting studio. After numerous voyages around Europe, he settles close to the place where his cradle had been. In 1640, he is buried in St. Jacob's Church, 500 metres from the place he had lived. In the 18th century, wars increase the commercial risk, and many wealthy merchants choose to partially secure their capital in real estate. As a result, beautiful patrician houses are being built on the Mayer. Two of those buildings from the mid-18th century still exist today. At number 50, we find the palace on the Mayer. A former city palace commissioned by a wealthy merchant, it was once owned by Napoleon Bonaparte, King William I of the Netherlands and the Belgian royal family. A little further on, at number 85, we find the Osteriath House, a mansion that is renovated around 1750. Its current appearance dates from that era. It is a fine example of the Rococo style. During the French rule at the end of the 18th century, the crucifix that stood on the mayor for almost 300 years is removed. With this, the religious element disappears from the streetscape and the Ancien Régime comes to an end. In the 19th century, the city within the boundaries of the 16th century ramparts has to adapt rapidly to the growth of the population, trade, and traffic. A revolutionary new invention is making its way to continental Europe, the train. On May 5, 1835, the railway line between Brussels and Mechelen is opened, and for the first time in history, a train runs on the European continent. In 1836, this railway line is extended to Antwerp. To facilitate the connection with the train station, the Spanish fortress near the Meersteeg, later called Leistraat, is pierced in 1841 through a pedestrian tunnel. A few years later, it is replaced by the Stati port, which is also accessible to carriages and which is connected to the train station by a road. 
From 1864, the Spanish fortresses are demolished and the Leyen are built on this site. The Leyen are wide boulevards that surround the old town. Following the American example, the horse tram, or Tramway Americaine, is introduced in 1873, a tram pulled by horses. The first tram runs between the Mayer and the Church of Bersham on the current route of Tramline 7. At the beginning of the 20th century, this horse tram is replaced by an electric version. At the end of the 19th century, the city council wants to create an axis between the train station and the city centre. For this, the mayor must be straightened and widened. The narrow Leistrat is also being tackled. In 1914, the First World War breaks out. Antwerp is under attack by the German army. The area between the mayor and the cathedral suffers heavy damages and is largely destroyed. Between 1929 and 1932, the tallest apartment building in Europe at that time is built on this site, the Boren Torin. From then on, this building will dominate the view of the mayor. In 1975, the street is broken up for the construction of the pre-metro. From now on, the tram will run underground and disappear from street view. Major works again follow in the 1990s. The street is completely redeveloped and becomes a pedestrian zone. Over the past 800 years, the mayor has evolved from a lake on the edge of the city to one of Antwerp's most prominent streets. Today, it is the ideal place to go shopping and afterwards have something to eat or drink in one of the many restaurants or pubs in the area.